I that is important. 为什么这一点非常重要 ？Before God pours a prophetic anointing upon a prophet. 当神要把这个先知的恩膏浇灌在一个先知身上 ，He first prepares a prophet. 他首先要装备、预备这个先知。His characteristics, his mannerisms are all formed and chiseled by God. 他的操行，他的整个的品格呢，要完全的来被神塑造。If you look at the life of Elisha. 要是我们看一看以利沙的生命。After he received the anointing from Elijah， 当他从以利亚那边领受了恩膏 ，his mannerisms and his ministry were duplicating exactly like the prophet Elijah。他所做的以及他所服侍的，简直呢就是和以利亚是啊重有，好像是啊一样的。Even John the Baptist duplicated or just Was exactly like how Elijah had lived. 而施洗约翰所过的生活呢，和以利亚先知也是有点相似。You know, John the Baptist and Elijah were thousands of years apart. 我们知道以利亚和施洗约翰之间呢是相差了千年这么远。There was no way for John the Baptist to know how Elijah lived. 那么，施洗约翰呢，根本无法去明白以利亚是如何生活的。But the angel Gabriel came and told Zechariah, John's father. 但是呢，呃，加百列这位天使来告诉施洗约翰的父亲撒加利亚说 ，While he's in the womb of his mother, he'll be filled with the spirit and the power of Elijah. 当这个孩子在妈妈的腹中的时候，他将要被以利亚的灵和能力所交换。And then you look at his life. 然后，当我们看施洗约翰的生命 ，It was very similar to the life of Elijah. 和以利亚非常的相似。So the anointing comes and prepares you like that. 所以呢，当神的这个先知的恩膏临到你身上的时候，就是要这样的来装备你。So among the many things that the prophet, the saint Moses, shared about his life. 那么，圣徒摩西和我分享了他生命的点点滴滴。The one thing he shared with me was about the mistakes that he made. 他和我分享的其中一方面呢，就是他所犯的错误。So my message today is entitled Moses' failures. 所以今天晚上的信息的题目是摩西的失败。Why they shared their failures? 为什么这些的圣徒要分享他们的失败 ？So that this last day's prophetic generation should be overcomers to inherit that anointing. 好，让这幕后世代的这些的群体，他们能够越过或是胜过这些的错误，而成为得胜者。On the thirtieth of April, twenty eighteen. 在二零。二零幺八年四月三十号。As I was praying one afternoon， 有一个下午我在祷告。I had a visitation from the Saint Moses， 圣徒摩西来造访我。And he, this is what he said。他对我说这样的话。Most only know the mistake I made of striking the rock。很多人都知道我犯了一个错误，就是用杖来击打磐石。But what they don't know is， 但是他们不知道的是。And he went on to list of the mistakes and the failures he encountered in his life. 然后呢，他就一五一十的告诉我他在生命里面所犯的种种错误。He said, "Tell it to the people." 把这些的错误告诉我的子民。So that the inheritors of the anointing will not repeat the same mistakes. 好让那些领受恩膏的人，他们不会重蹈覆辙。You cannot make that mistake. You 不可以犯上同样的错误 Because you are the last runner. 因为你是最后一个接棒的人，要跑完赛程的人 You cannot drop the baton. 你不可以让这个接力棒掉下来 Because there's no one to help you. 因为没有人能够帮助你 So what are the mistakes that the prophet or the saint Moses had done in his life? 那么摩西在他的生命当中犯了什么样的错误 Number one. 第一 Moses had lots of pride. This was due to his Egyptian upbringing. 那是因为呢，他是在埃及长大的。Exodus chapter two verse ten. 
在出埃及记二章十节，在使徒行传七章二十一节，it says that he was brought up by and Acts chapter 7 verse 22 says, 使徒行传七章二十一节说, He was schooled and groomed in all the wisdom of Egypt. 他学会了埃及一切的学问, you all know very well, 我们都知道, that in the ancient times, the wisdom of Egypt was the greatest wisdom all over the world. 在古代的时候呢, 埃及所有的智慧的其实是世界上最有智慧的学问 They were practically masters of all knowledge and wisdom 他们在那个时候呢已经通晓所有的知识和学问 As such great pride and arrogance is in them that they are literally the masters of the universe 那由于他们能够掌握全世界的资讯所以他们的内心就会自傲起来 Now Moses grows up in that culture 摩西就是在这样的文化里头长大 He's trained in that school 他在这样的学校里面受教育 He was groomed to be the next pharaoh 他 that was how his training was. And the scripture says in Acts 7.22 Not only he, he learned all the wisdom of Egypt But he was a great orator And a great administrator and warrior He was trained in all the arts of warfare Because of that The pride in him gave birth to another nature 这心中的傲慢呢，就诞生了另外一种的特质。Arrogance. Arrogance. 那就是傲慢、骄傲。Pride, arrogance, they go together. 骄傲和傲慢呢，其实是常在一起的。This arrogant nature was also flared up in him many times during his ministry. 在他服侍的过程的里面，这种的傲慢呢，不断的彰显出来。in Numbers chapter 20 verse 10 在民数记, uh, Psalms 106 诗篇, 106篇, Verse 32 and 33 In these two passages you will read about and see the arrogant nature of Moses 在这两处的经文呢, Now he was in the ministry but because they were undealt with, they were still inside him. His failure number two, or the weaknesses, he had an anger issue with him all the time. It was like inside him. Let me give you four instances in the Bible how his anger manifested. Number one, Exodus chapter 2 verse 11. And verse 12. Acts chapter 7. Verse 24. These two scriptures tell us In anger he killed two Egyptians This was while he was still a prince of Egypt Secondly Exodus chapter 32 Verse 19 says He received the tablets of the Ten Commandments from God Out of a large rock The finger of God cut 
two tablets. 神呢用他的手指在一块大石头上刻出了两块的石板。And the finger of God wrote the Ten Commandments. 神的手指把这十诫写在石板上。And God gave him those two tablets. 然后神把这两块的石板交给摩西。When he came down from Mount Sinai. 当摩西从西奈山下来。He saw the Israelite people having made an idol, and they were dancing in revelry and worshiping the idol. He saw the Israelite people having made an idol, and they were dancing in revelry and worshiping the idol. He saw the Israelite people having made an idol, and they were dancing in revelry and worshiping the idol. In a fit of great anger, he took the tablets and he broke it to pieces. Out of his anger, he broke the tablets and he broke them to pieces. Out of his anger, he broke the tablets and he broke them to pieces. Out of his anger, he broke the tablets. 开始的时候，我认为这是一个易怒。But this afternoon, the Lord showed me it was not righteous anger. 可是今天下午的时候呢，神让我看到这并不是摩西在发易怒。How do we know it's not righteous anger? 为什么我们可以知道这不是易怒呢 ？Because Exodus chapter thirty-four verse one. 因为在出埃及记三十四章第一节。Deuteronomy chapter ten. 在生命记第十章 verse one and two says. 第一和第二节说。God told him to cut two stone pieces and bring it up to Mount Sinai. 神要他再次的刻出两块的石板，然后把它带到西奈山上。The Lord told him. 神对他说。You broke the two pieces I gave you. 你把我给你的两块石板给打破了。Now you sit down and cut. <laughs> Two tablets and bring up to me. Now, 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 你可以知道，如果没有这些现代的工具，要从一块大石头里面刻两块石板是何等的艰难。Number three. 第三。In Numbers chapter twenty. 在民数记二十章。Verse ten and eleven tells us. 十十和十一节告诉我们。It was in anger that he struck the rock when he was not supposed to. 那由于他恼怒的关系呢，他没有听从神的吩咐，而用这个的杖来击打磐石。其实他不应该这样做。The undealt nature of anger inside him caused him to trip and fall many times. 在他生命里头，那一个根治的已经还没有处理的恼怒呢，使到他一再的犯错，一再的跌倒。You know, initially when we have weaknesses in our life. 那你看，通常当我们的生命里面有软弱 ，The Scripture says the Lord patiently and graciously overlooks. 然后呢，圣经会告诉我们，神会非常忍耐的来忍耐我们的过犯。But when you keep on maturing higher and higher with the Lord, 但是当你和神的关系越来越成熟的时候 ，The weaknesses that He once overlooked, 他曾经那些不计较的这个软弱。Now he will not overlook them. He will not overlook them. He will not overlook them. Now he will call that into judgment. He will call that into judgment. Now 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 he will call But when he strike the rock, 可是当他击打磐石 ，that became a serious problem. 那就成为一个非常严重的问题。So this was a great problem inside him. 所以这个恼怒在他的生命里头是一个非常重大的问题。Number three. 第三。Now the Saint Moses told me these words. 圣徒摩西告诉我这些话。You must not make the mistake that I made. What was the gravest mistake? You know, in his life, the most serious mistake. Now, it's not only the one that related to striking the rock. Not only the one that related to striking the rock. Not only the one that related to striking the rock. Not only the one that related to striking the rock. 
When God asked him to go to Egypt, God is extending a calling. He brought forth reasons why God's selection was not right. You read that in Exodus chapter 4, verse 13. You know, that is a very serious charge. We all know that God is all wise. And we all know that He is all knowing. So if He's all wise, all knowing, if He points the finger at you and say, Come, doesn't He know who is calling? Doesn't he know whether you can do it or not do it? Your flesh may say you are not the right person. But it's the Almighty God is calling you. How can that be a wrong choice? His eyes scans the whole of Israel. And among the all the whole of Israel, he saw this one man called Moses. He said, This is the man I'm going to use. In the same manner, God could have given you a call. You may have said just like how Moses had said. Lord, I'm not the right person. Have you said that? I'm sure you have. You know what that means? You are saying to God, Lord, you made a wrong choice. I'm guilty of that too. When God called me to do this television ministry, ministry, I really said that to the Lord. Say, Lord, you made a terrible mistake. The very fact that I'm standing here before you, it means how good and gracious God has been. 今天我仍然能够站在这里，就告诉你，我们的神是何等的美善。He could have burned me with fire. 他可能当我将回应他的时候，他就用烈火来焚烧我。Isn't it? 是吗? For telling him that you made a wrong choice. 因为你告诉神说，神啊，你选错了，你做错了。But that's what Moses said. 这就是摩西所说的。Lord, you made a wrong choice. 神啊，你。I'm not the right person. But before he said that, Exodus chapter 4, verse 1, verse 10, verse 13, he gave three excuses for God why he cannot accept God's call. In all the three excuses he gave, the Lord was very patient with him. And he also told him each time, I will help you, Moses. I will go with you. I will be with your mouth. But then, finally he said, Exodus chapter 4 verse 14 says, 在出埃及记四章十四节, He suggested to God that God sent someone else. 摩西呢, I think many of us are guilty of that too. Amen. 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 Have you said like that? You gave another name to God. Lord, I think that person is better. 
啊，神啊，我想另外一个人比我更好。Your selection committee made a wrong choice. 啊，你的那个遴选委员会呢，做了一个错误的选择。So the moment Moses said that， 一旦摩西这样说 ，The scripture says God was angry. 神生气恼怒了。And he was very angry for turning down and rejecting God's invitation, God's call. 因为他。推辞谢绝了神对他的呼召。Now why did he do that? 为什么摩西这样做 ？It was because of pride. 那完全是因为他心中的傲慢。And what is the pride an indicator of? 那么这心中的傲慢指示了什么东西 ？It was an indicator of an unsurrendered self. 这乃是一个。没有办法降服的自我的意识。It was because of his unsurrendered self, he keep on exhibiting his pride. 这由于他没有办法把自我降服下来，所以呢，他心中的这个骄傲就不断的显现出来了。He was also very fearful of the heavy responsibility. 而且对于这个重大的责任，他非常的害怕。That made him feel very insecure and helpless. 因为这样的一种状况使他感到没有安全感，感到非常的无助。You see that in Numbers chapter eleven. 在民数记十一章，我们可以看到 verses fourteen to fifteen. 十四到十五节。He asked God like this. 他问神。Why should I alone carry the burden of the Israelites? 为什么把这以色列人的重担放在我一个人身上 ？He was in a very desperate situation. 他乃是来一个来到一个非常呃绝望的一个境境界。And then he prayed a prayer that I think many of us have prayed. 他就做了这样的祷告，是我们当中很多人都曾经这样祷告的。Said God, kill me. 他说，神啊，你取我的性命吧。Let me die. 让我死吧。Have you prayed like that? You know why you pray like that? You know why you pray like that? Because if you kill yourselves, 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 if you So we want God to carry the blame. So, 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 we want God to carry the blame. You know, many times when we read the lives of Bible saints like that, 那每一次我们在圣经里面读到圣徒的生命 ，we can point a finger of accusation. 我们总是能够用手指指责他们。But when you go through a similar situation like that, 但是当你经历同样的情况 ，and you say the same words， 你也跟他们说出同样的话 ，then be able to sympathize with them. 然后我们就能够和他们认同了。In my life too, I've experienced that. 在我的生命的里头，我有这样的经历。The year 2013 is the worst year of my life. 二零一三年是我生命当中最糟糕的一年。There wasn't any before or after so far. 那么在来到来到这时候呢，并没有比这更糟糕的。This it is the darkest year in my whole life. 在我生命里头呢。二零一三年是最黑暗的时期。And I prayed like that. 我这样祷告。Lord, I didn't say you kill me. 呃，我并没有对神说你杀了我吧。I did like what Elijah prayed. 我像以利亚那样的祷告。Let me die. 让我死吧。I even plan how to die. 而且我已经计划好要怎么样死。You know, because I was at that lowest end. 因为我已经去到生命的低谷。When the attack, when the attacks from Jezebel and Ashtoreth comes at you, saying that God has forsaken you. 当这个耶洗别的灵和亚斯塔鲁的灵来告诉你说神已经离弃你了。See my whole life, I'm only living for the Lord. 你知道我整个的生命就是为主而活。So 
So if that God for whom you live forsakes you, 如果你为神而活，这一位的神要离弃你的话 ，Then why live? 为何还要活下去 ？This was how I pondered. 这就是我那时候一直思索的。Then why live? 为什么要活下来 ？If at the end of my life I'm going to be totally forsaken and cast into hell. 如果来到我生命的终点，我要完全的被离弃，然后把我丢在地狱里头。Then why continue to live for another thirty or forty years? 那何必继续的再活三十年、四十年呢 ？So I decided. 于是我决定。Let me end it. 让我结束生命。That was how low I went through in great discouragement. 那时候我是极度的失望，在我生命最低沉的一点。In great depression. 而且，生命很沮丧。At that point, I understood how the prophet Elijah felt. 就在那个时候呢，我能够完完全全的明白以利亚的感受。Because prior to that, I used to criticize why he did that. 因为呢，在这之前呢，我一直批评以利亚为什么会这样做。Then when I said that, 可是当我这样说的时候 ，He told me. 他对我说 ，Welcome to the club. 啊，欢迎你加入我的队伍。Now you know how I felt. Uh, so the prophet Moses was in such a desperate depression. So, 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 He was not the right choice. 他呢，向神表达他的意见，就是为什么他并不是最适合的人选。He was just pushing away the hand of God. 他乃是将神的手不断的推开。He was pushing away the call of God. 他把神的呼召不断的推开。And this is the excuse he gave. 这就是，这是他给谁的借口 ？I'm not an eloquent speaker. 哦，我是一个口才不好的人。I have a speech problem. 我在这个说话方面有点困难。But that is contradictory to what Acts seven twenty two says. 但是呢，这和使徒行传七章二十一节所记载的是有所冲突的。It says he was a great orator in Egypt. 那时候，那节经文说到他是埃及。最好的一个演说家。If he was a great orator in Egypt, how can he be not an eloquent speaker? 如果他是埃及最好的演说家，他怎么不会有流利的口才呢 ？He was mighty in words. 他用的都是大能的话语。So when he brought up that objection, 所以当他提出这一个的理由的时候 ，So God told him. 神告诉他。In Exodus chapter four, 在出埃及记四章 verses eleven and twelve, 十一和十二节 God told him, "I am the one who made the blind, the deaf, and the dumb." 我是那一个呃创造了瞎子、聋子和耳鸣的人 Now that does not mean all the blind, deaf, and dumb in this world are specially created by God. 这并不代表呢，所有的瞎子啊、哑巴或者是聋子呢，是神所创造的。That's what the scripture means. 这不是 That's not what it means. 这不是经文真正的意思。What the original Hebrew really means is this. 那真正的希伯来文的意思是 That God is the one who can make the dumb to speak, the blind to see, and the deaf to hear. 他真正的意思乃是说，神能够使到瞎子看见，能够叫这个哑巴开口说话，能够叫聋子听见。So what was the Lord God saying in essence? 所以神所要带出的重点是什么 ？This is the one important statement he was communicating to the prophet Moses. 这是神对先知摩西所说的一句非常重要的话。Nobody is unwanted. 没有一个人是没有用的。Nobody can be used by God. 没有一个人是在神的面前是毫无用处的。Even the dumb is useful. 即使是一个哑巴，在神的面前也有他的作用。The blind is useful. 瞎眼的人也是有用的。And the deaf is useful. 耳鸣的人也是有用的。All it will take God is a snap of a finger. 因为神所要做的只是弹指一下。And the blind can see. 然后瞎子看见。The dumb can 
speak. 那个哑子能够开口说话。And the deaf can hear. 而耳聋的可以听见。God just snap his finger. 神只要轻轻的弹指一下。And the Bible tells us a dumb donkey spoke. 然后圣经告诉我们呢、啊，连个驴子也能够说话。I don't know why we call it dumb donkey. 我们不知道为什么要称它为哑巴的驴子。Because all animals communicate in one way. 因为呢，所有的动物都有他们沟通的方式。So it's not dumb donkey, but he opened the mouth of the donkey to speak. 啊，所以呢，那并不是一只哑子的呃驴子，它神乃是开了驴子的口来说话。So remember this. 所以我们要记得 ，Nobody is unwanted. 没有一个人是被舍弃。Nobody can be used. 没有一个人是不能够被神使用的。Number five. 第五方面 ，He exhibited lack of trust in God many times. 他很多是。很多次都表现出他没有办法去信赖神。You would have expected that a great prophet like him was always a man full of faith. 那我们常常都会想到，这么一位有信心的先知啊，一定是他的信心是非常大的。But if you read Numbers chapter eleven， 要是我们去读民数记十一章 ，verses eleven to fifteen， 十一节到十五节 ，it shows you the inner heart feelings of。Moses. We can see the Moses' inner feelings. How he poured out his complaints and heart to the Lord God. He how he poured out his complaints and heart to the Lord God. He how he poured out his complaints and heart to the Lord God. He how he poured out his complaints and heart to the Lord God. He how he poured out his complaints and heart to the Lord God. He how he poured out his complaints and heart to the Lord God. If you, if you read that carefully, 要是我们仔细的读这段经文 ，it shows one thing. 他只告诉我们一件事 ，his lack of trust in God at times. 在某些时候呢，他对神是缺乏了信心的。Number six. 第六方面 ，the gravest mistake that the prophet Moses made was striking the rock when he should have spoken to it. 摩西所犯的最大的一个错误，就是当他应该对磐石说话，叫他出水的时候，他乃是用杖来击打磐石出水。Numbers chapter twenty， 民数记二十章 ，verses seven to eleven， 第七节到十一节。Why did he do that？ 为什么他这样做 ？God told him to speak to the rock。神告诉他要对磐石说话。But when he came out from the presence of God, 可是当他是从神的面前出来的时候 ，instead of speaking to the rock， 与其对磐石说话 ，he struck the rock in disobedience to the command of God. 他乃是用杖来击打磐石，而违背了神给他的吩咐。Why did he do that? 为什么他这样做 ？Because of two reasons. 因这两个原因。Anger and pride. 恼怒。It was anger and pride that caused him to do that. 是因为恼怒和骄傲，使到他做出了那样一个动作。He was angry at the people. 他对以色列民非常的恼怒。And he was very prideful of who he was. 而且他对于自己的身份感到非常的高傲。That too undealt nature inside him. Cause him to fall down. This in his life, two traits that were not dealt with properly made him fall down. How did that happen? 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 How did Generally, he was a very gentle, meekful man. 一般来说呢，谦呃，摩西是一个非常谦和的人。I'm sure you will agree with me by this statement. 或许对于这句话，你会同意。Even the most gentlest and the most patient people will sometimes flare up in anger. 啊，有一些呢非常柔和、非常谦卑的人，有时候呢，他们也会大发脾气，对吗 ？Have you seen people like that? 有看过这样的人吗 ？They did not suddenly become angry. 他们并不是突然间的发发怒。That monster was all the while inside them. 其实呢，这一只的发怒的野兽一直在里面。They did not crucify it. 啊，他们呢还没有把它钉死。They just chained the monster and was feeding them. 
feeding it every now and then. 那这一只发怒的野兽呢，只是被锁在心里头，然后每一天呢去喂养它。So it was slowly building up. 然后呢，这只小小的野兽就慢慢的长大。One incident of anger. 这件事的恼怒。Another incident of frustration. 另外一件事情使到非常沮丧。Another incident. 又有另外一件事情。All add up until the cup runs over. 那只不断不断不断的加增的时候，直到满意为止。This is what happened to him. 这就是摩西生命里面所发生的事。He took it very personal when it should not have been. 这使到他的生命里头不应该发生的事情，因着他的恼怒而发生了。People were complaining and murmuring lack of water. 因为以色列的子民不断的在埋怨、在投诉没有水喝。And they were getting sick and tired of eating manna. 而且呢，他们对于吃玛拿已经感到非常的厌倦。So they said, "Give us some flesh to eat." 他们就要求要吃肉。So. Where is he going to get flesh in the wilderness? 那么在旷野里头去哪里找到肉类呢 ？Numbers chapter thirteen verse twenty-six. 在民数记十三章二十六节。Up to chapter fourteen verse ten. 一直到十四章的第十节。There you read that the people complained about the giants in Canaan. 他们呢就对于这个迦南的巨人在那边埋怨。Now you follow the sequence. Ah,、uh, 你看到这个的顺序了吗 ？First incident was they grumbled because they had no flesh to eat. 那首先他们埋怨是因为他们没有肉吃。Second incident they grumbled because there were giants in the land. 那第二次的埋怨呢？那是因为在这个应许之地有巨人。Incident number three. 第三起事件。Exodus chapter seventeen verse four. 在出埃及记十七章第四节 ，Numbers chapter fourteen verse ten， 民数记十四章第十节 ，The people were so angry they wanted to take stones and stone Moses。这些的以色列民非常的恼怒的时候，他们要用石头来打死摩西。All this began to build up。这一切的事情呢，层层叠叠的，越来越强烈。And then Numbers chapter fourteen， 然后民数记十四章 ，verses twenty two to thirty six says， 二十二到三十六节记载 ，The prophet Moses was personally angry with the people because of them. He too must wander in the wilderness for forty years. 摩西对于以色列民非常的恼怒，是因着他们的关系，所以他也必须跟着他们在旷野流连了四十年。You know, it was because of them. That poor him had to wonder. 因着这般人的关系啊，他只得可怜的跟着他们一起转。How will you feel? 如果是你，你的感受是什么 ？Because of the sin of others, you are punished. 因为呢，别人的罪恶的关系，你要被惩罚。So his anger was building up. 所以呢，他的恼怒不断的加增。The final climax was when the people complained of for water. 来到这个世界的最高潮的时候呢，就是以色列民在逃投诉没有水喝。Or before that incident， 或者在这事件之前 ，There was another incident。还有另外一起事件。Numbers chapter sixteen， 民数记十六章。The rebellion by his fellow Levite people。那就是他其他的利未人所。所犯的悖逆的事。They complain against Moses and Aaron. 他们呃投诉摩西和亚伦。And Numbers chapter sixteen verse fifteen says. 在民数记十六章十五节记载。Moses was angry with them. 摩西对他们这些人非常的生气。So having said all this. 当我们看了这一起又一起的事件。The same Moses told me this. 圣徒摩西告诉我。It is my self-opinioned self that caused me to sin the greatest sin when I struck the rock. 那就是我的自我使我犯下了最重大的错误，那就是用杖来击打磐石。And why did he do that? 为什么他这样做 ？It was the result of my unsurrendered self. 那完全是因为我的自我没有办法降服。It was also the misuse of God's authority. 同时，他也是滥用了神给他的权柄。The rod that God gave to the prophet Moses. 神把这只杖赐给摩西。You know the rod that God told him to take. 神叫他拿的这只杖 
was not the rod that he had used initially. 并不是他开始时候所用的那支杖。Here God said, "Take the rod from my presence." 他说，在我的面前把这支支杖拿起来。So when I first read that, I wondered. 当我第一次读到这样的记载，我在想 ，What does it mean? Take the rod from His presence. 什么叫做在神的面前把杖拿起来 ？Wasn't the rod always with in His hand? 难道摩西手中的杖不是常常都在他身边，在他手中的吗 ？If the rod was always in His hand, 如果这支杖常在他手中 ，Why take it from His presence? 为什么要从的神的面前拿起来 ？Then I found out which rod God was referring to. 所以我就找到了神所指的是哪一支杖。In Numbers chapter 16, you will read. 在民数记十六章，你可以读到。After the rebellion of Korah and his company, 当可拉一族他们背叛神的时候 ，God wanted to settle the issue of leadership once and for all. 神要再一次的来处理这个领导人的问题。So he told the leaders of the twelve tribes to bring a rod. And put and give to Moses. 然后他就叫这十二支派把他们个别的杖呢带到摩西的面前。So they all had to write their names on the rod. 所以在这支杖的上面呢，都写上了各支派的名称。So Aaron represented the tribe of Levites. 亚伦所代表的就是利未支派。So Aaron wrote his name. 亚伦把名字写上。So Moses took the twelve sticks. 摩西就拿了这十二支杖。And he put inside the ark of the covenant. 他放在约柜的里面。The following day, 第二天 ，when they came， 当他们来 ，they found that only the rod of Mo Aaron had budded. 他们发现呢，只有亚伦的杖已经发芽。Shoots came out. 有芽发出来。Flowers came out. 有花了。And nice, delicious almonds came out. 而且呢，有这个杏仁也长出来。So by that, everyone came to know that only Aaron had been chosen as the high priest. 所以呢，以这个迹象来看，大家都知道呢，亚伦是被神拣选成为大祭司。So God told Moses. 于是神对摩西说 ，Keep that rod in the ark. For a remembrance throughout eternity, he said, "You have to keep this rod in the ark as a remembrance." So when God said, "Take the rod from my presence," so when God said, "Take the rod from my presence," so when God said, "Take the rod from my presence," so when God said, "Take the rod from my presence," so when God said, "Take the rod from my presence," so when God said, "Take the rod from my presence," so when God said, 所以呢，那就是代表神的权柄。Not your authority. 不是你的权柄。You are touching God's anointed. 你乃是在触摸着神所恩高的东西。So he took the rod. 于是呢，他拿起了这支杖。See the rod that budded is signifies the resurrecting power of God. 那你看到吗？这支的杖能够长芽开花，是代表着神那复活的能力。Holding the rod in his hand， 当他拿手中拿着杖 ，the resurrected power of God， 那就是神复活的能力。He was to go and speak to the rock， 他乃是要拿着这支杖来对磐石说话。But instead he used the rod to hit on the rock， 可是他却用这支的杖来击打磐石。This was his sin。这就是他所犯的罪。This is equal to the sins of what Nadab and Abihu did. 这也是拿达和亚比户所犯的罪。Leviticus, Leviticus chapter ten verses one and two. 利未记啊，利未记第十章一和一和二节。So recounting this, the Saint Moses said. 所以，当摩西和我回述这一切的时候，他说 ：“Pay attention to this incident。”你要留意这一起起的事件。Walk not in pride and self。千万不要行走在傲慢和自我当中。When you have an unsurrendered will。当你有一个不降服的意识的时候 ，the unsurrendered will will always give its opinions against the will of God. 
，你这个不降服的自我呢，总是会对神所提出的意见提出相反的意见。Let me give you a good example. 让我给你一个很好的例子。Mark chapter eight. 马可福音第八章 verses thirty one and thirty two. 三十一和三十二节。When the Lord Jesus Christ told the disciples that he was called to go and die on the cross. 当主耶稣告诉他的门徒说，他将要去到十字架上受死。Peter pulled him aside and rebuked him strongly. 然后呢，彼得把主耶稣拉到一边去呢，指责他。He said, "Lord Jesus, you are not going to the cross." 他说，主耶稣，你不应该上十字架。Why are you talking nonsense? 你在说废话。You are the Messiah. 你是弥赛亚。You are going to sit on the throne and reign in Israel. 你应该坐在宝座上，然后在以色列做王。Why did he say like that? 为什么彼得这样说 ？Unsurrendered will. 那就是一个没有降服的意识。When you have an unsurrendered will. 当你有一个降服的意识。Matthew chapter sixteen verse twenty three says. 马太十六章三十三节说 ，The devil can use that unsurrendered self and cause you to fall. 撒旦呢能够利用这个不降服的自我而使到你半跌。How did the Lord Jesus Christ handled such personal issues of conflict? 那么主耶稣是如何处理？这样的一个自我的冲突呢 ？So you have an old nature. 我们看到我们有老我。You have an unsurrendered will. 你有一个还没有降服的意识。How did the Lord Jesus handle that? 主耶稣怎么样处理这样的问题 ？We read that the prophet Moses failed. 我们读到摩西在这方面失败了。And then we read that Peter failed. 我们也读到彼得失败了。So if great heroes fall, 这些伟大的英雄都失落了。What is the hope for us? 那我们有还有什么希望啊 ？What hope do we have in this last generation? 在这最后的一个时代，我们还有什么希望呢 ？So the only hope is if whether the Lord Jesus succeeded. 那就是如果主耶稣他成功了。If he succeeded. 如果他成功了。What did he do to succeed? 他做了什么使到他能够胜过成功了 ？If we look at his life and model it. 如果我们看着主耶稣的生命作为我们的榜样 ，Then we will succeed. 同样的，我们也会成功。Amen. Amen. We can succeed. 我们一定会成功。So what did he do? 那么主耶稣做了什么 ？Philippians chapter two verse six says. 在腓立比书第二章第六节说 ，He humbled himself as a servant. 他谦卑自己，好像奴仆的样式。He surrendered his rights of being God. 他将他成为神的那种的呃权柄完全的降服下来。My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. 我亲爱的弟兄姐妹和儿女。This is the key. 这就是一个关键。Surrender your rights. 就是把你的权利完全的降服。Once you surrender your rights. 一旦你把你的权利降服。There's nothing for you to fight. 那么你不再需要去争取任何的东西。You don't have to fight for your reputation anymore. 你不要为你不需要再为着你的名声来有任有任何的争取。Because that has been surrendered. 因为那已经降服了。So there is nothing for you to fight. 所以你在生命里面不需要去争取任何的事物。John chapter six verse thirty eight says. 在约翰福音第六章三十八节说。He surrendered himself absolutely. And the scripture says like this. 经文这样说 ，For I have come down from heaven. 我从天而降 ，not to do my own will. 不是要做按照我的旨意来行事 ，but the will of Him who sent me. 乃是要遵循那差我来者的旨意。Please memorize that scripture. 请你要记得这节经文。John chapter six verse thirty eight. 在约翰福音六章三十八节。Meditate the scripture over and over again. 要不断的去默想这一节的经文。I did not come down from heaven to do my own will. 我从天上降下来，不是要按自己的意思行。But the will of Him who sent me. 乃是要按那差我来者的旨意行。So that means I am surrendered. 
换句话说呢，我是完全的降服的。I do not have my own opinions anymore. 我不再有属于自己的意见。My opinions are the opinions of Kim who sent me. 我的意见呢，就是那位差我来者的意见。That is why the Bible tells us. 这就是圣经告诉我们的。He always spent hours praying. 他就是，这就是为什么主耶稣花了很多。的时间在神的面前祷告。Not only to seek the mind of God， 不只是要寻求神的大能 ，but also to surrender His will all the time。而是要常常把他的意思降服在神的面前。We read that in Luke chapter twenty-two。在路加福音二十二章，我们可以读到。Verses forty-one to forty-two. 四十一到四十二节 In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed. 那就是在克西马尼园，主耶稣这样祷告 Not my will. 不是我的旨意，不是你，不是你，而是愿你的旨意成就。As a result of an absolute surrendered life， 由于主耶稣完全降服的生命 ，a greater glory rested on him all the time。所以，更大的荣耀总是在主耶稣的身上。John chapter three verse thirty four says， 在约翰福音三章三十四节说 ，The Holy Spirit rested upon him without measure。在主耶稣身上的这个圣灵呢，是无法去。测量和度量的。That is why the Bible also says. 这也就是为什么圣经也这样说。The Father God was constantly pleased with him all the time. 父神总是常常的喜悦主耶稣。Matthew chapter three verse seventeen. 马太福音三章十七节。Chapter seventeen verse five. 十七章第五节。My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. 我亲爱的弟兄姐妹，我亲爱的儿女。We learn from the mistakes of the Saint Moses. 我们从摩西圣徒摩西的身上学习了他所犯的错误。Now we can see many parallels in our own life. 其实，在我们的生命当中，我们都可以找到和他能够相比的地方。You go and meet with God. 你与神相会。And you check, analyze your life. 然后你去分析你的生命，省察你的生命。And you want to do like what the Lord Jesus did. 你要像主耶稣一样的做这样的事。Totally surrender. 那就是完全的降服。Absolute surrender. 彻底的降服。And tomorrow when we get here. 明天当我们再次聚集。We are going to meet with God. 我们要再次的与神相遇。We are going to have a powerful encounter with Him. 我们要再次的与神有一个大能的相遇。Amen. Amen. Let's all arise. 我们一起站立。Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, 满有恩惠慈爱的天父 I have communicated to your children all the things that you have shown me, Lord. 我已经把你对我所显示的所有的话语来告诉你的孩子 And I thank you for inscribing on their hearts all these truths. 我感谢你，因为你把这一切的真理铭刻在他们的心上。Thank you for the baptism of fire that you gave to your children this evening. 今我们为这今天晚上你给他们这烈火的洗礼，我们感谢你。Now I pray, Lord. 主啊，我这时候祷告。As your children leave this place to go to their homes. 当你的孩子离开这里回家的时候。I pray your presence will go with them. 我祷告你。Keep them from all evil along the journey. 主啊，保守他们在路上能够。
脱离一切的凶恶。And when they get home， 当他们回到家里 ，as they kneel down to even spend a little time with you， 当他们跪下来花时间来与你相遇 ，I pray you will come to visit them。我祈求你来造访他们。And as they analyze their self, 当他们分析自己的生命 ，Spirit of the Living God， 永活神的灵 ，You are the menorah in the tabernacle of Moses. 你乃是那一个在呃摩西的会幕当中的那那一个灯台。Let the seven flames from the menorah shine into their hearts and minds. 让灯台上的七盏灯能够照入他们心思意念的深处。And let the lights illumine them. 让这个的光能够启示他们。And expose whatever it is still hidden inside them. 把他们生命里头所隐藏的东西都完全的揭露出来。And help them, Spirit of the Living God, to totally surrender everything. 用活神的灵，愿你帮助他们，能够把自己、把里面的一切都降服在你面前。Especially surrender this issue of anger. 特别是把恼怒这个的问题降服在你面前。And transform each and every one with a meekful spirit. Like how it rested upon the prophet Moses. 主啊，你转变他们的生命，让他们变得好像摩西一样的谦和柔和。Remove every stain of greed in their lives. 主啊，除去他们生命当中一切贪婪的污秽。Which is another phase of pride. 这是傲慢的另外一个层面。Lord, many of us are trapped in this. Greed. Because many people have been trapped by greed. Tonight, help them, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, today evening, I pray that you help them. Help them, dear Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray that you help them to even tear away the face of greed from their lives. Let their lives be cleansed from this greed, from their lives. Let their lives be cleansed from this greed, from their lives. Let their lives be cleansed from this greed, from their lives. Let their lives be cleansed from this greed. Totally from within them. 要从他们的生命当中完全的除去。And so that they can, like the Lord Jesus, totally surrender before you, Lord. 好，让他们能够像主耶稣一样的完全在你的面前降服自己。Lord Jesus. 主耶稣。When the Apostle Paul cried out to you. 当使徒保罗向你呼求。To remove away all these thorns that were pricking him, 要把他身上一切刺痛他的刺给挪开的时候 ，You graciously appeared unto him. 你满有恩典的向他彰显 ，And you lovingly spoke encouraging words and said to him, 你满有慈爱的说出了这些鼓励的话 ，My grace is sufficient for you. 我的恩典够你用。I went through the same path. I will walk with you. 我会与你同行。Now I pray, Lord. 主啊，这时候我祷告。You yourself experienced agony of your self at the Garden of Gethsemane. 当你在克西马尼园经历到最深的痛苦的时候 ，Your self manifested at the Garden of Gethsemane. 在克西马尼园，你的自我也显露出来。That is why you also said. 这就是为什么你也说。If it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. 若是可能的话，请你把这杯挪去。But when you totally surrendered. 可是当你完全的降服。You prayed. 你祷告。Father, not my will, but thine be done. 主啊，不是按照我的意思，乃是按你的旨意而行。So tonight, help them, Lord. So today evening, Lord, I pray you help them. Help them to do the same thing. Help them to do the same thing. Help them to do the same thing. That before this night ends and they go to bed. When this night is over, they go to bed. They may say like what you said. 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 不是按照我的意思，神啊，乃是愿你自己的旨意成就。And when they lie down to sleep， 当他们躺下睡觉 
I pray give them good sleep like a baby lord. 我祷告他们好像婴儿一般的能够甜睡到天明。And as they are deeply sleeping, 当他们沉睡的时候。Open the eyes of their understanding and speak to them through visions and dreams. 主啊，打开他们的心，让他们能够通过意象和异梦来听到你对他们说话。As I am praying this prayer, 当我在说这个祷告的时候 ，I hear the Spirit of Christ speaking within me. 我听到在我的心里头，基督的灵对我说。Tell them not to miss this night, going to bed without first totally surrendering their self to God. 叫他们不要错过了这个晚上，就是要把他们自我完全的降服在神面前。God will come to meet with you tonight. 今天晚上神会与你相遇。And something wonderful is going to take place. 一些奇妙的事情将会发生。I see a tree of life. And the spirit of Christ is showing me. 基督的灵让我看到 Tonight is going to be a wonderful night of a new thing that God will do in your life. 那就是神今天晚上要在你的生命当中来行一件新事 The tree of life is going to be planted in your place. 生命树将会要根植在你的生命 It's going to be planted in the midst of your house. Especially in the place where you have built an altar for God. 特别是在你为神筑坛的那个地方，神要把生命树种下去。I've never seen anything like this before in my entire life. 在我整个的生命里面，我从来没有看到这样的意象。This is the first time I'm seeing something like this. 这个时候，我正看到这幅的图画。The tree of life being planted in your place. 那就是生命树要种在你家。So let them not sleep this night without surrendering their self, says the Lord your God. 你的主神对你说，你千万不要去睡，除非你已经把自我完全的降服在他面前。I will surely come to visit them as I came to visit with Adam. 我会亲自的来造访他们，正如我在原子当中与亚当同行。I see another wonderful thing right now. 这时候我又看到另外一件美好的事。A mighty eagle comes flying and resting in on the branch of the tree of life. 我看到一只大能的老鹰正飞过来，然后栖息在生命树上。Eagles always represents prophets. This eagle's feet are often represented as prophets. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. So God will cause them to come to visit to teach. And the spirit of Christ continues to say. 基督的灵继续说。But it takes a lot of sacrifice. 需要我们做出许多的牺牲。A lot of surrender. 许多的降服。And he shows me a beautiful picture right now. 这时候他让我看到一幅非常漂亮的图画。He says in the Garden of Gethsemane. 他说在克西马尼园。You see two trees. 你看到两棵树。One was the tree of life. 一棵是生命树 And the other, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 另外一棵就是分别善恶的树 It is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that will cause your flesh and your self to manifest. 这一棵分别善恶的树能够再一次的使到你这个的自我兴起来 And it is the tree of life that will cause the divine life of God to manifest. 只有那棵的生命树能够使到神那神圣的旨意彰显出来。The tree of the knowledge of good and evil will cause the unregenerate mind and the unsurrendered will to manifest. 
，这棵分别善恶树的果子，将会使到我们这些没有被更新的思想再次的显露出来。The tree of life will cause a renewed and transformed mind to manifest. 这生命树能够叫我们那呃更新的新思意念彰彰显出来。And it will also manifest a totally surrendered will. 而且它也会彰显一个完全降服的生命。So tonight you will experience that too. 所以今天晚上你也会经历这两件事情。To which you will yield yourself tonight. 今天晚上你将会把你的心倾向哪一方面呢 ？That tree will manifest in your life. 这样的一棵树将会彰显在你的生命。It will manifest in your home. 它会在你的家庭中彰显出来。Tonight the axe will be laid to the root. 今天。斧子将要放在树根上。Let the axe of the Lord be laid to the root of self in your life tonight. 今天晚上，让从神而来的斧子能够放在那自我的树根上。Are you willing to do that? 你愿意这样做吗 ？Lift up your hands unto God. 这时候，举起你的手。Before you leave this place. 在你离开这个场地之前。Why not we begin a good work? 让我们来开始一件美好的事。You open your mouth and you say to God. You 开口来对神说 Lord, I want to totally surrender my will. 神呐，我要完全的把我的自我降服在你面前 Pray with all your heart. 你要全心全意的这样来祷告 Let's not rush to go home. 让我们不要急着回家 You pray sincerely with all your heart. 你诚心诚意的从心里面向神祷告 Lord, I want to do that. 主啊，我要这样做